Actually, let's talk about that whole subject is cancel culture because some things I think are ridiculous and some things I think are well well deserved. Well, yeah, let's do that. Let's go on cancel culture. I think we should like just let's just go on like who different cases of that because it do. Yeah, we'll do that. So let's start with R. Kelly. No. <laughs> No exceptions, nothing like, like as far as canceling goes, there's nothing you can say. He did so, so many bad things. It was just, you know, you couldn't have, there's no way. And if you do, if you do still support him, because I remember when that happened, all when that documentary came out, his music spiked for some reason. It was like, it was weird. It was really crazy back, back then. I remember here, everybody was talking about it because it was... It's like, how in the hell did his music spike even after all he did the, after all this is done? But, you know, now he's in jail. That's all over. Just a serve. But it was weird because I feel like because uh, it's kind of it might be a little bit of a comparison because if they decided to let him get let Charlemagne get away with this, you know, R. Kelly went on like years, 20, 20 and 30 years of doing you know, the questionable stuff or, you know, all this stuff that's going on and people around him knew and, you know, but we all would just like, I, I agree. We all were just giving him a pass because why well, didn't really grow up in that era. I wasn't really into that. I mean, I did like R. Kelly's music, like a few of his songs just from the 2000s, just mainly a few hits, but, but, you know, I'm, uh, but after all that happened, I just, I stopped listening to him, but you know, still, I feel like things, there were so many things that happened recently also that I feel like I was listening to his music and I was enjoying it. And every time something would come up, I'd, I'd, I'd ignore it like everybody else because I was just listening to music and I was just like, you know, maybe I should have stopped a while back. I think a lot of people should have stopped <laughs> listening to him a while back because, you know, it was great because he was recruiting new uh, chicks at his at his trials, which is crazy as hell. But anyway, if we like if they gave Charlemagne a pass, you know, who knows that that could turn into, you know, what happened with R. Kelly. So for me, having been a really huge fan of Charlemagne, so it's easy for me to be like, oh, OK, I don't have to watch him. But but, you know, it just it it's it'd be a lot like I feel like, hmm. Should he be on the show? I don't know. I feel like maybe he shouldn't just because of all this. But, you know, I hope this doesn't further or anything. I hope he learns his lesson because we're about to watch the apology in a little bit. But let's, let's go back on cancel culture. What's another one? Who is? Oh, Kanye. Kanye, I don't feel like I... I don't feel like I really... I didn't really cancel Kanye ever. I think I just saw him differently and didn't really like. Like I never stopped listening to Kanye. His his music was so good, so far in my childhood that I was just, you know, I just kept listening. And you know, I think at the time I was sort of like, you know, there's so many people doing worse things. Kanye is just talking mess. And for a while, I think I was off. Like I was for like a couple months or so. I was just like, nah, I ain't gonna listen to him because he. What he said, the um, member of uh, the uh, slavery thing, that when he was, oh, when he was saying slavery was a choice, I was just like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? I think I went a month with, or a few months without listening, but then I just randomly started. Like, I didn't even think about that. I feel like sometimes their music and, and well, their music and their art or whatever it is, uh, to some people, that just goes over anything they say. What, what I mean by that is, like, his music was so good that I, when I think of Kanye, I don't think of that moment any anymore. I see him differently, but I don't think of that moment anymore. And that doesn't exactly give him a pass. Like, it doesn't give him a pass to, you know, talk that way and do all that. It's just, you know, I feel like when you think of Kanye, you think of his music first rather than that one moment of him just talking talking mess or whatever. But what's another one? Like uh 
Because, you know, I do, as someone who creates and my art and everything, there is some stuff like, what's, let's say, like YouTube. I feel like uh, uh, a lot of times there it like it's become such a thing to where it's hard to be funny almost because, you know, you're always you always got that filter to where you're you try not to say the wrong thing but, or, you know, because there's a lot like there's a lot that go, goes through my mind because I think of a lot of jokes sometimes and some of the jokes are. You know, I would never say out loud because I don't want to disrespect anybody. But also, it's just, you know, to me, they are really funny. And sometimes I tread a li- I tread lightly, but sometimes I tread a little too close. Especially when I'm on social media and I'm making jokes on there. But, but you know, there there's some stuff uh, uh, like, like I feel like YouTube censors a lot of stuff. But also, I just, c- certain topics... Have become so. There's certain topics you can't joke about anymore that I feel like you know it's not that big a deal to joke about. Even the. I'm trying to think of some of those topics, but anyway, it just seems like you gotta you gotta filter everything you say, especially when you're going on YouTube and and everything. But you know, there's a lot of funny content that may sound a little whoa, but you know, people feel like they can't laugh at it or, but. Then again, I feel like sometimes as a creator, we don't know where other people are coming from, like how it would affect them joking about that. But there'd be some stuff that's just ridiculous, like just sounds ridiculous. And, um, and you know, it's just, it's tough. It's tough to create when there's always that consistent filter. That's why I think I'm, this is an announcement. I've been thinking about this. I never said I was going to do it, but... I think I am going to do it. I'm going to create, there's this app called Storyfire where, you know, you can, uh, it's sort of like YouTube. You could upload on there, but um, a few of my favorite YouTubers use it, but you could pretty much do uncensored stuff because some stuff would be taken down. Some stuff you just can't joke around in front of everybody. But if you go, it's called Storyfire. I think they tried, like, they're still like sort of growing. I don't know if it's even still a thing anymore, but I think I'm going to do that because, you know, just sometimes you just can't show everything on here. But also, like, like, I feel like sometimes the audiences can get a little drastic, like, like, um, uh, here, here's a case. Here's a case. Me. Let's do me as a case for cancel code. I feel like I almost, almost got canceled before I even got got <laughs> barely any subscribers when i uh did that elote is trash uh post i did a post first and then i did the video met there are people calling me racist see that's why the audience they be kind of you know just they be on me sometimes it's like you know these are sort of my my opinions like i feel like like some of the stuff you guys accuse me of it don't make sense even, especially the people that know me in real life it's like damn like, you know, I'm not that way. You know, I love, I love all people, but like that, that was funny. If that's what, that's what got me canceled before I even started was, you know, me saying Elote is trash because everybody was, was hot. They were hot about that. They couldn't stand like, cause some people never heard it, but the fact that people were <laughs> accusing me of being a certain type of way, especially the people that know me. Like there was a there's a few people who were the most positive people I've ever known in my life, but they they came at your boy. They were like, "Damn, you are that's not funny anymore. Who you think you are?" But you know that. But then I I would respond. I respond the right way. Say, "Hey, you don't understand, man. Like I'm just like it's just my opinion. It's just my opinion. There's there's maybe we should move this here then." There we go. That's an empty can, by the way. I got done drinking it, but I still wanted an ad. That was, wow, that's embarrassing. Like the first time, all of you probably thought that. So when I dropped it the first time, I'm like, this this boy got an empty can. <laughs> but this has some stuff in it, but it's not on a coaster. But anyway, you know, it's just different. And like Kevin Hart, like, see, so the thing about Kevin Hart is, first of all, I didn't cancel Kevin Hart ever. 
only because you know he just his specials you know that you know i want to well i am a comedian i'm still you know writing and stuff but you know i look up to him because i've watched him all these years and but the reason i didn't cancel him is because you know the tweets he made uh were were like years years ago and i know that's no excuse he still said it but you know it's like it's like somebody went through the trouble just to dig that up that didn't matter to anybody those jokes like i don't i don't approve of those jokes but it's like nobody cared about those and someone was purposely looking for the like people are waiting for certain people's downfall like kevin hart was was at the top doing his best and you know they brought that up and i think what what ruined it for kevin hart was he just responded the wrong way like the way he he didn't really apologize said he wasn't going to apologize said he apologized back then and i was when he said that me i was just like okay he apologized back then but um you know like i said i'm not a part of that community i don't know how stuff hits them but the fact that you know it just all happened even though all these years no one really cared about it. but but it, then again longevity don't really sometimes it don't matter especially with the whole R. Kelly thing, but you know, it just sometimes it don't matter. But I think it's obvious that he doesn't feel that way now about that community. You know what I'm saying? And it's it's like what <laughs> you just digging up stuff because people evolve all the time. Like, but except for R. Kelly, I guess R. Kelly don't don't evolve ever. He just keeps going down. But but um, you know, Kevin he. I feel like everybody knows he don't feel that way about that community anymore. He made jokes about it, but, you know, the way he feels now, I wouldn't say he he feels that way. He just didn't, res- I guess he didn't respond the way he wanted to. But that's also the thing. Like, what if he, even if he did apologize, because, look, look, I'm not defending Charlemagne at all. I didn't like what he did and how he did that or whatever, but... Before I go in there, I was about to talk talk about the apology, but we're going to watch the video, watch the apology, and just to get it in, and then we'll talk about it. So, here we go. This was Charlemagne's apo- apology to Kwame Brown. He made himself donkey of the day. I don't know what that means, but but apparently it's this bit off of uh, The Breakfast Club, but he gave himself donkey of the day, and he explains why and apologizes, so let's get into this. I want to apologize to Kwame Brown and Kwame Brown's family. I want to apologize to his father, Bill Brown, and, and, and the family of his father. See, last week on this radio, in my attempt to defend a Charleston, South Carolina-born brother like myself, uh, I revealed too much information about that man's family. And even though all that stuff is public record, some things just don't need to be said on the radio, and they definitely don't need to be said by me. When I look back, you know, on the way I communicated that. I communicated it all wrong. And I unintentionally triggered trauma in a lot of folks I grew up with who I genuinely love. I'm sure I caused a lot of pain for not only Kwame Brown, but for his family, especially his family in my hometown in Monks Corner, South Carolina. You know how I know? Because I spoke to a few of them. Uh, I've been on the phone this weekend with, with, with mothers of children and their children. Uh, salute to Shaliba and her daughter, Brianda. Brianda, Brianda. I was on the phone with... Uh, sisters like uh wallet smooth the wallet okay okay we're good on that so what i want to say about that is you know people say the response of kevin hart that that was the only issue but even if he did apologize like because oh i do i might no i didn't never mind but anyway kwame responded to this and you know just pretty much said charlemagne's full of shit he's he don't mean any of it he only said that because you know i i responded and it got borrowed or whatever but but and a lot of people agreed with kwame i agreed with kwame but you know it's it's sort of like even if kevin hart did apologize you think that same thing wouldn't have happened to kevin hart like this he wouldn't get the same thing like oh kevin hart don't even mean it because you know, people will be mad about... I've learned this a long time ago. People will be mad about no matter what you do. That's why I always choose to do right. Like, because, 
you know, believe it or not, there's people who don't like me right now. I, I don't know why. Maybe it's because I keep saying Elote is trash, but but people don't like like me right now. They just, and sometimes it's the success. success. Like this, the, like this has been a long time coming and I'm just happy. I'm in a happy spot right now. And sometimes people try to tear me down. I don't respond. Don't don't need none of that in my life. Just trying to, you know, stay positive. But like I said, even if Kevin Hart did apologize, apologize the right way, I feel like he would have still got the same backlash as Charlemagne. And could, even if he was genuine or or not, you know what I'm saying? Like Charlemagne, he could be genuine, or he could just be like, oh, okay. I need, like if I don't apologize, then I won't be on the show no more. But either way, I feel like that response was coming, and it's like you can't win. Like you liter- literally cannot win, and that's the only thing I don't like about cancel culture. I hope I don't get canceled for a lote or anything else, because you know. By the way, SMH, great show. Hope I don't get canceled for that show, because there's a lot of stuff on there that you know. I just you know, a lot of opinions on there that be getting people. So I hope that, you know, we just stay out of this, Charlemagne. I don't know if you should be on the show anymore. If, um, because I believe, yeah, Kwame said some of his black friend, black female friends, give him a little bit of, of a pass. And, you know, maybe they are. I hope they're. They're not, and but we should watch him. Check check his behavior, and if it happens again, we should really like, hey, can't have this guy on the show no more. Cause yeah, I feel like the whole cancel culture is the is the enemy to pop culture. 